Welcome to Workshop 2, all about tea. In Ireland, we drink approximately 1,460 cups of tea each per year. And this means that we are second in the world for tea consumption per capita, with Turkey topping the tables. Tea first came into Irish culture from England in the 18th century. It was imported into Britain from China and then India. And we in Ireland tended to get a harsher variety of tea here. And this was important in the development of the traditional Irish cup of tea today. More milk had to be added to soften the harsh brew, but this then diluted the taste. So people steeped the tea for longer then to make it all work out. This gave Irish cup of tea a milkier yet stronger taste. And that's what we like today. One of the best cups of tea I ever had was after the birth of my first child and I also got some toast as well. Mm. So now we're going to make a cup of tea. First thing you'll need is to put on your kettle of water. Fill up your kettle with nice cold water. comes to the boil. Add in some hot water to your pot to scald it. The lid on, gently give it a twirl. Tip it down, sink or somewhere else. And then get your tea bag. And this, is, this is an old tea caddy that I got many years ago, I believe from a skip outside my old studio in Dublin. Um, so. Then bring the kettle back to the boil because you want it really on the boil when you pour it in. This makes all the difference, I believe. Lots of steam rising. Lid on. Now we're putting it on that uh, stand there, and then depending on the time of the year, you could put a tea cozy on to keep it warm while it's brewing. So, while we're waiting for the tea to brew, decide on whether you're going to drink out of a mug, which is nice and handy, or a teacup and saucer, which is more traditional. You could also be putting some milk in a jug to have it ready. Now's the time to get your sugar. I must say I gave it up years ago for Lent. I must have been about 10 maybe. And after that, I never went back to it. I just preferred tea without sugar. But I understand that some people like their sugar in their tea. And um, that's fine. Tea making is made very simple if you keep your teas close to hand near the area. Now I have, um, I replenish my tea bags into this tea caddy here, and I'm quite sentimental about it. <laughs> and uh, that's how I don't like to see the, the box of the tea, I like to use the caddy. And that would have been a tradition in my home. Uh, we had a tea caddy, but we had loose leaf tea as you can see here, it was this type of tea and there was a teaspoon left in it constantly and the teaspoon went completely black and was almost like a different, a different metal altogether. It seemed to have got lighter or something. Tea. So if I'm wanting a variety or a different green tea or a nettle tea or whatever, I'll just cast my eye along here and choose something 
this Mandela tea from South Africa. Even if the tea is empty, the tins can be nice and they remind you of different places and traditions. Energy tea there. Um, Harrods. So keep calm and carry on <laughs> drinking your tea. We've waited about three to five minutes and the tea cosy has been on keeping the teapot warm and then the tea of course. So I like to sometimes put this softer one over it if it's a bit colder and we have a lot of fun with this because we call her Debbie. Have you got an interesting tea cosy? Would you like to take a photograph of it and share it to the Tipperary Bealtaine page on Facebook? So let's pour. Lovely. Got our milk. Just a little amount there. Now you don't have to use a spoon, but I think it just helps sometimes if you have time brings it all together into a nice golden brown American tan tight colour. That's my favourite. Mm, really nice. So remember to share your tea drinking rituals, photographs of funny tea cosies and so on, on the Tipperary Bealtaine Facebook page. Now let's try using the loose leaves of tea to make a pot. So again, bringing the kettle up to the boil, Pouring a little in to scald the pot. It's important that the lid goes back on. Then, because it's such a small pot, I'm only going to use a bare skim of a teaspoon there. Now again, back to the boil. And then in we go with the water. lid on and wait. Now while you're waiting for the loose leaf tea to brew you can stir the leaves around taking a spoonful about seven times to the left maybe seven to the right whatever you like. Back on the lid and it percolates it a bit better I think. I'd like to point out a feature of a teapot, which is very important for health and safety. It's the lid part. So it has a little bump here that sticks out and you can put it in and turn it in any direction. Here it's aligning with the, the steam hole there and that should be pointing at the back. So when you lift up your teapot, the tea lid, cannot fall into your teacup. So we've waited a while now, about five minutes, and I'm going to try out this tea. I'm not going to use a strainer, so what we do is we just pour it um, like so, and I don't see any real tea leaves coming out. They've all settled to the bottom of the teapot. Well, that's a lovely colour. There's no tea leaves in. So it's not a given that you are going to have a mouthful of tea leaves if you use loose tea. Well, definitely there might be a different taste here. Mm. I think so. Very similar though. Now if you stir your tea leaves And then proceed to pour a cup of tea. All the tea leaves will come out. <laughs> but fear not, you could just wait and let them settle. In some milk. Give it a while and then see what it's like. Mm. No, I think all the tea leaves have settled definitely to the bottom. And as you get to the end of the tea, you might notice that the tea leaves 
uh, making some kind of pattern at the bottom. My mother would have looked at that and said, Oh, I wonder, can I see something in this? That kind of looks like a chicken with a hat on, I think. <laughs> so have fun if you use your tea leaves in your tea. Um, don't be too afraid to allow some into the teacup and then at the end you can maybe see, can you see patterns in the tea leaves that remain at the bottom of the cup? For fun. I recently enjoyed a cup of green tea made by my sister using green tea leaves from Japan. She received this gift of an incredible teapot and two tumblers to drink the tea from. It was absolutely beautiful. Incredible colour. Camellia sinensis, or tea as we know it, is a close relative of Camellia japonica, azaleas and the famous rhododendrons. So it is possible to grow your own tea in Ireland. So what of other types of tea? I went on a permaculture design course in Carrick Doolra Organic and Permaculture Farm in County Wicklow last year during a break in the lockdown. And as part of the course, we looked at herbs and all the different things you could do with them, including making our own tea. So it was very interesting to discover that you could make tea out of quite a variety of Irish grown wild and even garden edibles. Identification is a huge part of this and so you should only use trusted herb books and also go on courses. We had a visiting uh, workshop from Courtney Tyler, Hips and Haws. That was really fascinating. Now I look on the countryside with renewed eyes and see potential for teas and edibles in our natural environment. When I was a little girl, we were warned not to touch this particular plant, which is called a cuckoo pint. My grandmother used this plant to heal cuts. So proceed with caution and maybe start in your own garden looking at what you can make tea from. But even plants such as mint, rosemary or even raspberry leaves have certain qualities and properties and they may interfere with any medications you're on, so you should check with your GP or general practitioner that it's safe to drink that tea. Now let's head out to the garden to pick some herbs. I've got my basket and my clippers. Let's go. Now the first herb I'm going to cut is rosemary. The flowers are just keeping in bloom now, they're on the, the way out. Um, but I've cut those as well. And then we move on to mint. It's just coming up to a point where I can cut some. And I keep mint in a pot because it would take over the garden, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, but I do want to grow other things. Next door to the mint is my raspberries. And they are growing quite wild now, though I'm trying to keep them in check. I mainly love eating raspberries in the summer, but now I'm looking at the plant as a potential for tea as well, using the top three young tender leaves. Now I'm going to pick some sage. I have it growing at the front of my house, which gets a lot of sun. A sage likes sun and dry conditions. Sometimes I might take a leaf and chew it if I'm feeling like I've got a sore throat. So that's all the herbs I'm going to pick from my garden to make a Bieltana herbal tea. <clears throat> We're back in from outside and we've got lots of herbs here. Rosemary, great for your memory. And I've also got mint, good for digestion. Raspberry leaf yeah. and there's also a red currant. Leaf. While herbs have been used for thousands of years for common ailments, this Bielthana tea is not a health product. If you are pregnant, nursing, taking medication or have a medical condition, you may need to consult your healthcare provider before taking this Bielthana tea. If in doubt, check it out. So now I'm just checking the leaves that I've brought. It's um, top of the left, mint. Underneath we have sage, 
feeling the leaves, making sure they're all healthy. Raspberries are next there, the three top leaves. Rosemary, again, picking the top parts, they're tender. And uh, a little rogue red currant leaf got into the mix, but it is edible. Next, we wash our leaves. I would actually recommend then you do a second rinse just to be sure everything's clean. So next you're just going to pluck the leaves off. Apologies about my cat. I don't want to make too much, um, I don't want to have too much rosemary in because it's quite strong. And the next thing I'm going to put in is some mint. Oh, shush. And some sage. Mm -hmm. Plenty of mint. It's really nice. Uh, for the digestion and try the raspberry leaf. So I'm just plucking it, tearing along. The... Yep. And one red currant. And about that. So next we'll get some boiling water. Three hundred. We pour it in. Ooh, oh, it smells lovely. So while we're waiting for those herbs to infuse, um, basically it is like an infusion. Um, all the tastes and flavors are coming out. Um, I'd like to use this cup system which is like a little tea strainer that you sit in the cup and it's got a little ingenious lid which keeps everything nice and warm. So I'm just going to use only mint tea now here. Whoops, that goes there. I'll just put in my leaves. Roman women used to chew on mint to conceal the scent of wine on their breaths at a time when they were put to death for drinking wine, as it was only considered suitable for men or gods. So I think we we'll let this mint tea become an emblem of the feminist movement. I've also added sage, a sacred herb to the Romans. So a truly divine feminine tea. So you know when you get to the top, it sits in there. We'll leave it alone. Put the lid on. Mm -hmm. Looking good, smelling good. So I've got my jug and I'm just going to strain tea. And then we can have a cup of the alternate tea. Why not make your own Bialtana tea and share your recipe on the Tipperary Bialtana Facebook page, hashtag tea and bread. So herbs for tea don't have to be fresh. They can also be dried, like this marigold here. This is a sample of yarrow, or if you're feeling romantic, try rose petals. I think there's nothing more romantic than a cup of tea outside, 
using a Kelly kettle. Designed over a hundred years ago by an Irishman from County Mayo. Mm-hmm.